You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. A proud member of techpodcasts.com. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at QuickSurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here, so do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other shows over there. I'd like to uh, introduce everybody to a new show that I'm uh, hosting and producing. It's called Today's Tech News. It's located over at tech.quicksurf.com. And uh, as many of you may or may not know, I recently became unemployed, and so I'm attempting to ramp up my uh, podcast production uh, in an effort to su- support myself uh, until I can either find another job or permanently not have to find another job. So uh, please head on over there, tech.quicksurf.com. It's a daily uh, technology news show. It's audio only for the time being because I just don't have enough computer processor power to you know, produce a daily video show. I'd love to be able to, but um, at this point in time, I just can't do it. Um, so check it out. Please subscribe. The subscription link is there in the show notes. And uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and get into the news for Season 12, Episode 4 of Linux News Log. From the Inquirer, Novell fires up SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP apps. Now, this is pretty interesting. Novell has announced the availability of the SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP, explaining that it will let customers run a range of the German software house's business applications. The release could appeal to firms that are looking to consolidate their data centers or simplify their server estate and will let them run their applications on Linux boxes. Novell added that users can benefit from faster installation, lower total cost of ownership, and support services from SAP while running both physical and virtual systems. So this is pretty cool. If you're in the market for this sort of thing, by all means, check it out. Ever since Linux appeared on the computing scene, interest in it and open source software has steadily grown. In 2002, to support this interest, the Southern California Linux Expo was established. Like Linux, interest in scale has grown steadily year after year. So, for 2011, we are proud to announce that scale is moving to a larger venue. This year's show will be held at the beautiful Hilton Los Angeles Airport. The move to the Hilton provides enough space for the addition of a fifth speaker track dedicated to system administration as well as an almost 20% increase in booths on the expo floor. The Hilton is located at 5711 West Century Boulevard near Los Angeles International Airport. The 9th Annual Southern California Linux Expo runs Friday, February 25th through Sunday, February 27th, 2011. For more information on the Southern California Linux Expo, go to www.socallinuxexpo.org. We'll see you at Scale9x. From the register, German Foreign Office kills desktop Linux and hugs Windows XP. This is kind of an unfortunate reversal of roles. Usually you see news where, you know, organizations or governments are dropping uh, Microsoft products and going towards Linux and open source. But uh, still, nonetheless, openistas beware. Politicos at the German Foreign Office are reportedly ditching Linux in favor of returning to their desktop PCs and Windows XP-based systems, according to a report on technopolitik.org, which was diligently spotted by the H, the German Foreign Office recently decided to dump their Linux-based machines. That move became, came despite the office being reassured in two separate appraisals carried out by the consulting outfit McKinsey that Linux and open source software formed a perfectly adequate part of the German Foreign Office's IT strategy. So kind of unfortunate, but, uh, you know, you lose some, you win some. As long as you're making forward progress, that's all that really matters. From MarketWire, the Linux Foundation has a new company joining them. Intrinsync joins the Linux Foundation. Uh, Pretty nice. Intrinsync provides software design and services that help its customers compile in today's high-stakes device market. Core to its strategy is the development of high-quality software while accelerating time to market for the world's leading device makers. Intrinsync achieved notable success with the development of the first Android-based e-reader and has followed up with several software and services agreements to support Android mobile device development. So pretty nice. Check it out. 
From the H, action against Sony for blocking Linux on the PS3 has been broadly dismissed. This is an, another unfortunate turn of events. The U.S. District Court for Northern California has broadly rejected a class action launched in response to the removal of the other OS option from the PlayStation 3. As Groklaw reports, the judge agreed with arguments advanced by Sony's lawyers that hardware acquired by a user need only support console functions during the one-year guarantee period. Sony explicitly excludes software functions and PlayStation Network services from this guarantee period and reserves the right to amend their functionality at any time. According to the judge, the user acquires usage rights for the software only. The judge thus rejected the complaint that Sony Computer Entertainment America had breached the Consumer Legal Remedies Act and Civil Code 1770. So, unfortunate, uh, the article points out that uh, they may, Sony may have breached the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, which makes unauthorized changes to computer systems a criminal offense. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, be following this as it unfolds, but uh, kind of unfortunate that the judge pretty much just went, nope, you're done, bye. So we'll see how it turns out. From sourcewire.com, IGL, IGEL, IGL, pioneers support for Microsoft Remote FX on Linux thin clients. To co coincide with the early awaited release of Microsoft Windows Server 2008 R2 Service Pack 1, boy, that's a mouthful, isn't it? IGL announced its upcoming support for Windows Remote FX on all Linux based universal desktop thin clients. This means that almost any content can now be displayed remotely on a Linux based thin client, providing a high quality user experience without the need for any locally installed codecs or multimedia redirection. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Kind of nice. Check it out. From the Free Software Magazine over at freesoftwaremagazine.com, the OpenPC project, ready-made GNU Linux machines. I found this to be very interesting. The Open Desktop Community's OpenPC project is now offering three different models of open computers with turnkey GNU Linux and KDE installations based on OpenSUSE or Ubuntu, if that's your choice. Uh, these systems could provide real competition with pre-installed Windows or Mac computers, overcoming some of the most frequently cited problems with GNU Linux on the desktop. The systems are now available from vendors in Europe and in the USA. So uh, if you're in the market for a new computer and you want to go Linux-based, this is a pretty nice option to consider. From Uber Gizmo, and I know we don't have Uber Gizmo uh, here for very many Linux things here at Linux Newslog, but I did see this uh, pretty nice article over at Uber Gizmo. The Navi Surfer 2 brings Ubuntu Linux to your car. You got to check this out. It's pretty cool. If you've always fancied having a computer dashboard in your car but weren't satisfied with the current offerings you've seen available on the market, the Navi Surfer 2 might be the computer for you. The Navi Surfer 2 is basically a touchscreen computer that runs Ubuntu Linux and has a 3G HSPA modem as well as a GPS receiver built in to ensure you'll never be out of touch or lost wherever you are. The Navi Surfer 2 even has a whole bunch of input and output ports for you to make use of. Pretty nice. Uh, basically, it literally is a full-blown touchscreen computer that you throw on the dash of your car where uh, your normal you know, radio, M CD player, AM, FM, you know, cassette deck, all that, where, where your normal deck goes. It's a little bit taller, so it won't necessarily fit in every vehicle. But uh, I thought this was pretty awesome, and I decided to uh, let everybody else in my audience know as well. So check it out. That'll do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Just visit us, visit us online at, over at quickshift.com and uh, do subscribe if you have not already done so. Also, go check out uh, the new daily tech news show, Today's Tech News, over at tech.quickshift.com. And uh, please subscribe there as well. I would uh, love to get everybody's feedback on the show. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we'll get it to where I don't have to uh, look for a job and I can make a living off of it. But until that happens, uh, the job search continues. 
And um, hopefully I get uh, the audience over there as well as this audience ramped up enough and have get some income coming. We've got uh, an inbound sponsor, a new sponsor that we have never had here on the show before uh, starting uh, in the next week or so. So that'll be pretty interesting. And um, with that, I will see all of you next week. See you then. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye.